Hey, Nick, we have tons of different drug delivery methods that come through our, our orbit. We and, sure uh, do. You know, we've even produced cool graphics in the past, and you can think of almost anywhere in your body, there's a, there's a way you can introduce drugs. What's your That's number right. one favorite uh, way of, of, of drug delivery? Sure, yeah, so for, for me, I think the number one is the most efficient, right, and that is intravenous. Right, uh, direct but in there. Direct gets right in there, but of course, the number two route is uh, elementary. Oh, elementary, right, and what does that mean exactly? Yeah, so that, of course, I'm talking about suppositories. Uh, suppositories, you know, I've been making suppository jokes for years, <laughs> but, uh, so juvenile. but, you know, I understand they're actually quite important. I understand that they're not kind of uh, gone, they're still quite active and quite strong. Yeah, and it, it's uh, that's uh, exactly right. And it's actually shocking. I just um, happened to read a, a really great review article from 2022 mm -hmm. talking about um, you know really suppositories making a resurgence. And and interestingly enough, the the market size for suppository drug developments in the three billion dollar range with that's a huge. ten percent CAGR, which is remarkable to me. Yeah, wow. But it kind of, it makes a lot of sense. You know, if we think about some of the use cases where suppositories make sense. So for example, if you're unable to ingest drugs, you have, uh, you know, you're, you're not able to keep drugs down. Yeah. Great time for a suppository. Or I imagine if you're unconscious. If you're unconscious, yeah, it's a bit awkward, but yes, that, that is an op that's a, certainly is an opportunity there. Uh, if you're trying to get past the first pass metabolism route, or if you're looking at long duration, you know, the way suppositories work is, um, you know, basically it's a, it's a drug encapsulated in something that, that melts at body right. temperature and then oh, okay. slowly releases a drug and gets systemically uh, uptaken that way. Right, and that's different from the way it might work in your stomach. Yeah, because the stomach, you know, if you think about, di even, you know, if you're treating digestive diseases, there's a lot of mobility, motility issues mm -hmm. that are going on there, right. whereas you can, con oddly right. enough, you can control it the other way. Yeah. The other thing, of course, uh, you know, it goes without saying, but some of the topical treatments, like hemorrhoids, of course, right. or constipation, yeah. those are going to be the stalwarts of, of a good treatment for, yeah. or a good use case for yeah. those Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's such an old technology, but also seems like it's very innovative. It, it, you yeah. know, and, and that's that's the interesting thing for me, at least in this review article, they were talking about uh, some of the novel drugs that we're looking at delivering right. there, and that right. includes, you know, liposomes, uh, nanoparticles, solid-lipid nanoparticles. We right. all are familiar with that from the from COVID. Yeah, uh, and some really interesting chemistries, uh, some, uh, some thermal reactive mm -hmm. chemistries, right? So you have it at, at room temperature, it doesn't yeah. dissolve, and then at body temperature, it does. Right. Uh, and even mucoadhesives, right? right? Which is kind of critical in that area. Yeah, cool. Fascinating, fascinating wow. development work. Sounds like complicated drugs, but not so complicated delivery. Abs absolutely right. Uh, and uh, one may even say elementary, my dear Nigel. One might. <laughs>